Do have someone who wants to speak in Canada? Okay. Let's do the talk in English. Um, this talk is about Docker networking, as the little said. Uh, it's not just that I will explain you what are the drivers in the network drivers in Docker, but also how they work. So expect some demos and coding and something like that. In this talk, I will um, ask questions to you. So please be prepared to answer this question. If not, I can go on. My name is Lorenzo Fontana. I am a DevOps expert at Kiratech. Kiratech is a company based in Verona who does Docker and DevOps consulting. We are actually hiring, so please, if you feel that you would like to change work or work in with me after the talk, um, please send your CV at lo at linux.com. I am also a Docker maintainer, so I am involved in a few Docker things, also as a Docker captain, and those are my links. And I don't like vowels, and that's all. The container network model is how Docker um, handles networking. Actually, the container network model it's not implementing container network interface, which is the standards of Open Container Initiative. If you expect that at some point Docker will implement that standard, I'm afraid to say that probably that won't happen. In this talk I will try to be cross with other platforms like Kubernetes and other things because actually how it's done underneath it's the same between the platforms. So, uh, the, the interface changes, but uh, the, the topics are always the same. So, the container network model um, has three different concepts. The sandbox, the endpoint, and the network. Who would like to guess what's the sandbox? The Linux? Nobody? Thank you. The sandbox is actually the network namespace, right? So if you take a look at this, you can say the sandbox, which is, as I said, the network namespace. Linux has a few different namespaces, uh, which are used to actually implement um, containers, right? So if you Think about a container, uh, you can think about the process which is isolated from the host using the namespaces. So the namespace we concern about is the network namespace. In this namespace, there's implemented the endpoint, which is actually one or more endpoint, which is the um, Ethernet interface. Okay? So like ATH0, ATH1, ATH2, etc. And the endpoint is a wet pair with the, with the other network. Okay? So in the other network, there's another interface, which is called virtual interface something, and it's a wet pair. Do you know what is a wet pair? Someone has an explanation? Sorry if I ask those questions, but are mandatory to go on. Nobody? When you have two network interfaces and you want them to talk and to act like are the same interface to get the same packets and all the things, you have to pair them with a wet pay. Okay. The container as an Ethernet uh, as a um, Ethernet interface which is paired with the other interface in the host and with that it can talk with other containers also in other hosts with different drivers, we'll talk about this later 
And to do that, there's this wet pair. A wet pair is a point-to-point -point connection, so if you need more containers, you need a bridge. Okay? Have you never seen the Docker Zero? Who saw the Docker Zero? Please raise your hands. Thank you. That's the bridge which handles the wet pain. So, about the three concepts, the sandbox is the network needs space inside the container. When you enter in a container, you are in that network needs space and you can't use the routing table of the host, you can't use the, interface of, the interfaces of the host. You can just use what's inside the container. If you don't isolate the container, when you run a container with NetHost, for example, you just have the network interfaces of the host and you don't have the sandbox. Okay? So, the sandbox, the endpoint, wet pairs with the network, the other network. The implementation of container network model in Docker is called the network. Docker slash network on GitHub. Please, if you want, contribute. There are a lot of things to do in this repository to make this project more aligned with the industry standards, like OpenGoSwitch, for example. Uh, it's, we are always talking about software-defined networks, so it's not a very easy topic. Right? And let's talk about the network drivers. Um, in Docker, Whenever you start a container or a service in Docker Swarm, you get uh, to use a network driver for your container. So, the network drivers are now, never seen now, never used now. You just start a container without any endpoint and without the wet pair so that the container can talk with other containers. Can you hear me if I talk like that? Non c'è un microfono, Michele? I, I, I don't know if I can say it. <laughs> it's something like demo time, so I need to. Okay? Probably I can do that. You can hear me type. Okay, so if I do APA in these containers, I don't get any network interface. So there's no pair for this in my host. I happen to have a stand in my pocket. Wow. Thank you. Okay, so on the left side you get the container, on the right side you get the host. And this is the host. I don't have any wet pair for that container in the host. So this is completely isolated from the other bridge. Going on, we have the default network. When you just do Docker run something, you get, if you are not in Docker's world mode, you get a bridged network with Docker zero. So if we do that, actually, we get just a network interface which takes an IP address on the bridge and which has a wet pair on the host. Can someone tell me this is the Docker Zero? This is the subnet, okay? 17 and 17. There's someone here who can tell me actually in the host, which is the wet pair of this interface. It's the, this one or this one? Who raised the hands for the first? <laughs> Sorry. This is the Ethernet in the container, and those two 
are the virtual Ethernet and the host. Which is the right one? The first one, WET4E or WET1C. WET C, C, what, what, what? Okay. So this one. Why? Because you don't specify any kind of network, so it gets attached to the WET1C. Yeah, yeah, okay, but why is the second one and not the first one? The first one is always. In the Docker Zero. Yeah, master Docker Zero. Okay, there's another thing to say that is the pale. So if I if I actually start more containers, <coughs> which is now the pair of the second container. It's more difficult because there are, there are two interfaces on the Docker Zero, right? So, the thing is that you just have to look at the number of the interface and at the pair. I said wet pair before, right? So, this is my pair number and this is the pair number on the host. Please mind about this concept because we will use it extensively next. So, 17, 16, 16, 17, 18, 19, 19, 18, okay? So, for each container you create a host, there's a wet pair if you are using the default drive, okay? So, in this case, we have three containers we check three different IP addresses and get a wet pair. Those containers are all bridged because we need to have uh, multiple containers wet pair and not just point to point. And to actually enter in those containers, when you expose a port, there's an IP table port mapping pre-routing so that if you do docker run p8080, the other network can reach your nginx, okay? This is bad or this is a good thing? That actually the containers are netted at some process level. It's a good thing or a bad thing? It's always bad. It's always bad. It is. Yeah. It's always bad. I agree. Thank you. I agree. It's my opinion too, but netting is not always a good thing, right? If you can avoid it, thank you. So, the default bridge can be over overridden. If you need to isolate group of containers on the same host, you can just create your own bridge. Or if you want a different class of, uh, different IP class, this took the 20 class. Uh, 2002, 2003, and 4. It's the same as before. It's just that you overwritten it. In this example, you can note that there's a label. This is just to give a name to the bridge in the host. If not, it will just give the bridge br dash something. What if you would like to? Assign the IP address, assign an IP address on the underlay network at layer 2 to a container running in your host. This is a way to do that, okay? So, if you want to, you know, bridges, <laughs> okay? So you can actually bridge your container level networking to your underneath switch, okay? If you do that, <coughs> if you want to do that, you can do that in this way by creating a rigid network, giving it the same uh, subnet of your other network, giving it a gateway in its internal network, 254, 
and after the user say code's address to identify the outer gateway address and after that the name which is the most important thing and after we have to tell the bridge okay <coughs> add yourself to the interface which is connected physically connected to that switch and you can run containers which have IP addresses in your network so you could do that also with public IP addresses is this good? who can guess how this is made? please someone no. okay this is made by doing a prayer routing rule in IP tables <coughs> which says okay I just tell that that TP address is of the host machine and when the host machine receives that packet it sends the packet to the container so your network needs to be in promiscuous mode okay for example in one where nobody okay this is not really good because all these happen at process level not all but a lot of these happen at process level so if you are concerned about performances this is not the best way to do and it's not a very handy to do, right? you have to add the interface to the bridge and guess what happens when this interface is the only interface that you have in your machine and you are connected in SSH to that interface you get disconnected so because the interface goes down and if everything is okay you can reconnect to the machine but if not what happens you can connect to the machine forever probably so let's go on said that there's a solution to this problem and it's called MacVLAN and IPVLAN. I don't know why I sit down. So, if you need to do go in underlay, saying you want to segment your network with your hands and not letting do that to Docker, you can use one of those drivers. Uh, what do I mean? why there are two drivers, MacVLAN and IPVLAN and after I will explain to you what they do who can guess what MacVLAN does? three, two, one MacVLAN is at layer two IPVLAN is at layer three so what do I mean? that IPVLAN has knowledge of the IP step so to bind you underlay docker asks for an IP address and bind that IP address to the IPVLAN driver which, which basically means kernel because that is done at kernel level it's, those two are two kernel models kernel just listen for probes to that TP addresses, for packets to that TP addresses, for EGMP requests to that TP address. So, it's bad or not? No, it's not. But it's experimental, it's in, just in the mainline kernel and all the things. So if you need something more stable and, um, you know, LTS, <coughs> There's the MacVLAN driver, which is done, with, which, da, which do the same thing, but at layer two. What do I mean? That each container gets an IP address on the underlay, on the underlay network. Sorry, an IP address, a MAC address on the underlay network, and register itself, and it gets traffic for that IP address. The DHCP can see an IP address and all the things. But there are different ways to handle a MacVLAN driver and to configure the MacVLAN driver for each container 
and alcohol modes. These things are not Docker specific, or at least they are implemented in Docker, but those are kernel things. Like so, if you are using KVM and you want to uh, connect your underlay network with the virtual machine, the same thing, okay? Or if you use Kubernetes. So the Bridget mode means okay. Containers talk directly each other when they are. Oh, what happens? To, oh no, it's right. Um, containers connect to each other when they direct to each other when they need to talk to each other. But if they need to talk, or if someone needs to talk to them from the outside, they just bypass the host and go directly on the switch. So you don't have to do port mapping and all the things and everything has the expected performances like if the host is physically connected to the machine. There's also the private mode. What happens? <coughs> the underlay switch uh, and does the path that containers are connected to the to the host, but they can't talk to each other. If you want to avoid containers to isolate them, to talk to each other, and you don't want them to talk to each other, you can just use the private mode. And to connect to the outside, they are just directly connected. And the VEPA mode, <coughs> Virtual Ethernet Port Aggregator, means that everything go through, through the switch. So Docker doesn't do nothing. If you use this mode, you can tell your router to do everything. Okay? This is the most powerful way to handle Docker networking at the moment because it doesn't use Docker networking. <laughs> okay? uh, it's not the joke, it's that uh, in Docker, um, the networking is mature at this time, but um, it's always a software-defined thing which is not uh, being there for a lot of years, like Open Switch, for example, which has something like 10 years. And, you know, also there's a problem that for the most of drivers you will need to do netting and overlay things and all the things which are very useful if you need to be more to be a lot flexible but you know if you already have the infrastructure to handle this why not use your own infrastructure at least for uh, public facing things okay and there's the path through which is like the private mode but Everything originates from the host, like the container and the host are being together. And <coughs> there's my favorite, which is the overlay network driver. We will have a few moments of code around this. And who can guess what's happening there? Please raise your hands. <coughs> Have you ever started a Docker Swarm cluster? Yeah. Who started it? Thank you. Who used Kubernetes? <laughs> Thank you. If you have multiple hosts and you are not using the underlay networking to connect containers, like I explained, you probably are using the in Docker, the default overlay network. In Kubernetes, probably Flannel, which does the same things. And in OpenShift, you probably use OpenSwitch. Okay. So what happens in those overlay networks? They just allow you to connect containers on different hosts, like if they are in the same layer two network. What do I mean? We have an underneath layer 2 network 
And on top of that, there's a software-defined software -defined network at another layer to software-defined network, which connect the containers. So what's happening in there? Those three are the hosts. And in each host, there are three containers, C1, C2, and C3. As you can note, containers does have IP addresses on the 10.0 subnet for ATH0 and on 172.18 for HE1 and the wet pay. And there's a Docker Zero bridge and there's the same netting of always and the network interface and the network switch. So, who can guess which one is the layer 2 network constructed on top of the layer 2 network that exists in the network switch? Which one of the two? ATH0 or ATH1? Raise your hands for ATH0. Okay, most of the room is wrong because it's HH1. No, it's HH0. <laughs> I, I like to joke. But anyway, if I start a service, I like Alpine, I like Top, so perfect match. Doesn't start. Okay. I delete the old container, so voila. So if I enter in this container, my cluster is just my machine, but the concept applies for if you are in more machine or something like that. So if I enter in these containers what I should expect. If I do any PA, what happens? How many interfaces there should be? Two? Three, four? At least two. At least two. Or at least two? Why? Because there's the look back or not? You, you are counting the look back? Okay, so three. We should get three interface. Why this doesn't work? So, yeah. No, it's not this. That's this is but no. Doesn't get the interface. Okay. Anyway, it's probably because I am on only on one machine. No, it's because I'm stupid. Okay. <laughs> okay. Docker network creates. Test. Okay, so now it's an overlay network. Tada, Docker PS, Docker X for a SH. So it gets three interfaces. And the same question as before. First, why there are three interfaces? And second, on the host, where are those interfaces?
First thing to note, the bridge is not called Docker Zero, but Docker Jivu Bridge. This is because Docker wanted to avoid conflict between the two bridges, but the bridge is practically the same. But the thing you, that, that you need to know is that there's another bridge with the, which is distributed. And where is this bridge? And where's the pair interface? So if you look at this EPA, there's 25, 26. 10, 0, 0, 3, and 27, 28, 172, 18. So, 28, 27, perfect match, 28, 27, and 25, 26. Oh, there's no 25, 26. Where is that? Where possibilities? On the other notes, who votes for this? Or are Eden who votes for this? Raise your hands for the second. Raise your hands for the first. Sorry? Is it on one note? Yeah. So? Yeah, but on the other notes, the, the probable other notes. The future nodes. <coughs> First, you can create a wet pair of an existing interfaces. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's a wet pair. <laughs> it needs the pair, right? So, the answer is it's hidden. I need to go up, but probably I will. Oh. I'll get the password at the third tentative. Okay. Yay. EP, which is the command on Linux to get information about the network interfaces. Who uses this con if config? Oh, the new one is EP. Okay, so use EP. It's like SS and Netstat. Okay, so SS and DP, not net that in this config. But say that EP expects network namespaces inside run netns. But there's no there's no run netns in my computer because Docker writes network namespace in run Docker netns. So I will do an ugly thing to make EP work with this thing like a symbolic link. NetNS. So, if PNetNS list now show me the network namespaces on the host. <coughs> so, Docker not found. Oh, in the container, Docker PS. So, if I inspect the container, with Docker respect, I get all the information about the container, but I am mostly interested in the network information. I get this sandbox key. Who reminds sandbox before? Okay, so the sandbox key for this container is AC70, that is this one. If this one is not present in the OS, Docker networking is not working. Networking, not working. So, if you want to, what if you want to enter just in the network namespace of the container without entering all in the other namespaces. Like if you, you want just use the network of that container to talk with others, but you don't want to have the namespace of that container or the EPC or... The way we are using is EP, NetNS, exec, much like Docker X. ED of the sandbox and SH, and magically, we are in the network namespace of the container. So it's the same network namespace, but we haven't found the interface. So where's the interface? So to prove that, I will say that this is my home, and I don't mount my, the, the, my home in the container. So, uh, and 
I can do Wireshark and I can inspect the network and all the bad things. So I am in the network namespace of the container, but I'm still on my computer with my binaries, with my graphical environment, with all my things. And this is the container. So closing Wireshark. Stop and quit. So this that one was not the right namespace, so which one is the namespace where the interface is hidden? It's probably 469. No. It's probably NC. Yes. So network ID, not endpoint ID. Why? Because endpoint ID is the ID of the web virtual Ethernet, right? So if I exec, note the difference between Docker container <laughs> networking and hidden namespace networking. I will, I will explain what do I mean for hidden. So SH, oh, net, net. Yeah. oh sorry, TI, Y, A, yeah, Docker. Okay, wow, 26 at 25, so. Is this one? Fantastic, so. What was happening in there? Whenever you create a service on, so containers, on an overlay network, you're actually saying, okay network, please create the hidden network namespace on each node and do for me the tunneling, okay? So it's most like, uh, VPN, grid tunnel, or EPSET, something like that. Docker creates for you a so named VUXLAN tunnel. If you saw the terminal before, you can note that in there there's a VUXLAN network, which is not something fancy, but, but which, which is implemented in the Linux kernel. And that tunnel just it's just there to create the layer 2 network on top of the existing network. What does this mean? That if the container gets AP 10.0.0.2 and the container 2, oh sorry, 10.0.0.5 and 10.0.0.6, whenever 10.0.0.5 want to do a TCP handshake, for example, it will just say C and ask for the VUTEP which is a bit of virtual tag because we, in normal network, we will have a normal tag, which is the one that actually does the web pair. Okay, but this is a distributed web pair, so we need a virtual tag. And the virtual tag says, okay, um, tell me where you want to, do, to go. And the container says, okay, I just want to do a scene on. Six, it asks for the distributed um, key value store in Kubernetes ATCD, for example, and in Docker Swarm it's embedded in Swarm, so you don't need to set up that, and asks for where is six, and the uh, key value says it's on 200. And okay, so the packet is encapsulated in a UDP frame with all the information of where the packet is going and for what container is it. And then the packet is delivered in the underlay network. So if you want to provoke this, other than the IP address or the numbers, for what you can say that this one is 
passing through the Vuix land and this knot. Well done. It's the MTU, of course, because it's lower than the normal MTU, which is this one. Minimum transfer unit, okay? So, why that? Because the packet needs to be encapsulated in another packet. If that is not done, the thing that happens is that packets are delivered partially. So, you don't want that, and you need the lower MTU. Finishing with a new fancy thing, which is commercially named. How many minutes I have? Three, four, one? Okay, thank you. One? Uh, commercially named, marketing named, the routing mesh, you know that name in Docker, means that whenever you expose a port in the cluster, 80, you get all the nodes replying on that port and re-delivering packets to the container, <laughs> the, services, the services exposing that port. This is implemented using LWS, Linux Virtual Server, which is not a virtualization tool, but is a layer 4 load balancer as proxy. Layer 4, I mean, it doesn't have the applicative stack, HTTP, so you don't get or SMTP or what you, whatever. You don't get cookies, you don't, uh, you don't get sessions, you don't get domain names or resolution or something like that. So you just expose the port and behind that you probably put uh, an Nginx or an HA proxy and you deliver deliver packets to the right container based on the virtual IP. Whenever you start a service which has networking, Docker gives the containers, the pool of containers, a virtual IP, which is a not ephemeral IP address. When you start a container, you get an ephemeral IP address. You can't rely on that. When you start a service, on the, on the overlay networking, you get a fixed IP address which, is, which will be the same for the rest of the life cycle of the service. Okay. So you can point your reverse proxy to that, for example, server, nginx, proxy pairs, the virtual IP, or the name resolved by the Docker service discovery, the, the internal DNS. And you don't have to do magic tricks like interlock or listening to Docker events to update the HR proxy configuration, something like that, which we said it's bad to do netting. It's worse to use things that update your proxy whenever a container starts or stop. Imagine if you have a container churn of Lots of containers starting and stopping and scaling and HR proxy explodes. Okay, so that's all from my side.